Welcome to the O Museum in the Mansion. We'll tell you all about our 10 glorious years with Mrs. Rosa Parks soon. But first, allow us to bring some context to your visit. We first open our doors on Valentine's Day 1980, the way it was meant to begin, with a heart. Spanning five townhouses with over 100 themed rooms and 70 secret doors, the mansion is a fusion of all the arts, as a museum, a concert and events venue, and a boutique hotel. But its higher purpose is what makes it truly unique. When founder H.H. Leonard bought the house with cash advances, credit cards, and a lot of prayers, she had a clear vision. She wanted to create a sanctuary, a special safe house for anyone who needed it. Founded in the belief that everyone has ability and need to be creative, the O Museum and the Mansion's overriding goal is to empower people to do what they love, to dare to be different, and to have fun. From heads of state to famous rock stars to regular folks like me and you, everyone has a place in the mansion. One of our most treasured supporters was civil rights activist Mrs. Rosa Parks. In 1955, she sparked a revolution by refusing to give up her seat on a segregated Alabama bus. The driver demanded that I give this seat up for a white man. I I didn't feel that I was being treated as a human being. I refused to give up this seat. I said no, and I wouldn't give it up. From that moment, she became the mother of the civil rights movement. One evening, years later, H received a phone call from a friend saying Mrs. Parks had been attacked in her home in Detroit. And they heard about our Heroes and Artists in Residence program. Could she come and stay here when she got out of the hospital for a few days for free? Wow. She was here approximately 10 years, which is incredible. And that's how Mrs. Rosa Parks became part of our Heroes in Residence program. H wasn't the best student, so initially she had no idea who Mrs. Parks was, other than a wonderful person, of course. Over time, their bond grew stronger, and Mrs. Parks became a mentor and mother figure to age. I don't think we would have been as close if I had known. I would have been scared of her or thought she was so, too important. Mrs. Parks loved entertaining friends at the mansion. She held formal gospel brunches where everyone wore a hat and white gloves. And nearly every year, on her birthday, she would hold fabulous tea parties. Lady H used to own a big yellow school bus. When Mrs. Parks had important meetings in DC, H would drive her there in the bus. Imagine this pulling up to the White House. Mrs. Parks always donned a huge childlike grin as they chugged along through the streets. This is her old room on three. During renovation, it was completely transformed. H found the bed before she got the inspiration for the room. You can see it here in the background, just waiting for the room to be built. And the lime green bathtub was replaced with a mahogany wooden tub. Mrs. Parks was the first person to stay in the room after it was created, and Lady H named it in her honour. The O Museum in the Mansion is now officially on the African American Heritage Trail, and rightfully so. She often stayed here with members of her Pathways to Freedom Foundation. In 1990, South Africa's anti-apartheid hero, Nelson Mandela, was released from prison. That same year, he flew to Detroit, specifically to meet Mrs. Parks. As he stepped off the plane, he was met with a long line of dignitaries instead. He scoured the crowd, spotted Mrs. Parks, and marched straight to her, chanting her name. The crowd called on, and soon thousands of people were chanting in unison. He hugged her and said, you sustained me in prison for all those years. It was a remarkable moment. A few years later, Mrs. Parks was invited to his birthday celebration, which she could not attend due to her age. Lady H went on her behalf and read her missive. This is what we have done, lifted ourselves up from the prisons of the world and let imagination and inspiration, our quest for equality, be the hope of others. In 1999, Mrs. Rosa Parks was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the highest award a civilian can receive. 
The medal was designed by our very own artist in residence, Artist Lane. Mrs. Lane and Mrs. Parks were both from Detroit, both activists in their own right, and had been good friends for many years. Mrs. Lane even gave us a maquette she used for the medal. You can find it on the second floor. In 1999, Mrs. Parks was invited to meet the Pope in St. Louis. She took Lady H with her. On the way to meet him, Lady H helped Mrs. Parks craft a letter to read to the Pope. This picture shows Mrs. Parks reading out that very letter. Amongst other things, it said, The issue of racism still plagues our world. It is a cancer that has troubled me and others throughout my life. As a most respected, honoured and moral leader of this world, I ask your patience to address racism with your words and example. The next morning, Mrs. Parks and Pope John Paul II gave a joint press interview on racism in America. Later that day, Lady H asked why she had been invited to come, of all people, especially since she was white. Mrs. Parks turned to her and said, Oh dear, I didn't know you were white. Mrs. Rosa Parks passed away on the 24th of October 2005 in her Detroit apartment. Her body laid in state at the Capitol Rotunda, the first woman to have ever been given this honor. And so, even in death, she continued to challenge boundaries. H was a pallbearer at her funeral services in Montgomery, Alabama, Washington, D.C., and Detroit, Michigan. Southwest Airlines donated a plane and crew for transporting Mrs. Parks' casket to each city. Lady H, her husband Ted Sparrow, and their children, Z, Hannah, and Sonny, accompanied Mrs. Parks' body between the three funeral locations. Each of the children took one leg of the journey. It was a fitting way for the family to bid farewell to this wonderful lady. In 2013, Mrs. Parks became the first African-American woman to be honored with a life-size statue in the Capitol Rotunda. Lady H attended the dedication ceremony and hosted a reception at the mansion after the historic unveiling. Though Mrs. Parks is physically gone, her spirit continues to live on 